Hello everyone, thanks for joining our webinar on uh, Q4 WebAssembly. Uh, during the session, if you have any questions, please submit them via the Q&A button at the top of the interface. Those questions will be answered at the end. This webinar will also be recorded and you will receive a copy of it delivered to your email account. Uh, I hope you enjoy and I'll now hand you over to our expert, Martin Servig. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let's get uh, started. Uh, I hope you can hear me as well. So this uh, webinar is going to be about uh, Qt for WebAssembly. And Qt for WebAssembly allows us to do this now. We can run Qt examples and uh, applications uh, in the browser. So these are all uh, live Qt examples that I can uh, interact with. Let's see, I can... Uh, Type and so on. Yeah. Uh, so, what I would like to do today is to kind of explain uh, what this is all about uh, and show you uh, how to get started uh, with Qt for WebAssembly. So, we are going to look at uh, what WebAssembly and Mscripten is. Uh, we are going to look at how to build uh, your build Qt for WebAssembly and then build your applications. And then we are going to look at some topics on how to uh, integrate uh, with the web platform. So, uh, so this is a new platform for Qt, but it has uh, uh, it has some limitations and uh, specialties. Uh, that you might not be familiar with if you used uh, Qt for other platforms. So we're going to look at how to do uh, local file access, how networking works, and a couple of other topics. So Qt for web browsers. Uh, we've had a, there's a couple of different solutions uh, here. Uh, one precursor to all of this was Qt for a Google Native Client, uh, which you might have tried or heard about. So that was uh, a similar technology that uh, existed for the Chrome browser uh, only. Uh, so that was kind of a kind of a false start, false start that's no longer supported. And then in Qt today, we have uh, the WebGL streaming solution. So that's a solution where uh, the application is running on the server, and then the UI is streamed uh, to the web browser. And then we have Qt for WebAssembly, which I'm going to talk about today, where uh, the application is actually running on the web browser, uh, on the client itself. And so, and why do you want to do this? Uh, we get some of the same benefits that we have uh, that web pages or web uh, uh, applications have that you can, uh, it's kind of a single uh, target. So you, you build for the WebAssembly platform and you can deploy it to many different devices as long as those devices have a web browser that supports uh, WebAssembly. It's also sandboxed, so there's no uh, installation required. Uh, and there's no kind of uh, app review process. So you can publish applications uh, instantly or update uh, instantly. And so the platform stack uh, looks uh, something like this. Uh, so you have your application, uh, your Qt application, which uses Qt. And then uh, Qt has a backend or a platform plugin for uh, uh, for WebAssembly, uh, which is implemented using Mscripten. So these are kind of the components uh, in play here. And so, uh, so WebAssembly is a, it's a virtual machine that runs in the browser that you can target with a C++ compiler. And it's, uh, of course, it's supported in the major browsers. So, uh, 
on the desktop and also on uh, mobile. Mscripten is uh, kind of the SDK we are using. So Mscripten provides the uh, C++ compiler and also uh, the runtime. So it helps us uh, target or use the, uh, the web APIs from C++. So what's new in Qt? We have a new platform for Firefall. It's uh, the WebAssembly or Wasm uh, platform. It's in tech preview. Uh, so you can try it out today if, if you want to. We aim to, uh, to have it kind of fully of, or officially supported for 5.13 perhaps. Uh, there are some limitations on the host system support. That's where you run the compiler when you build your application. Uh, you need either a Unix system, so either Mac OS uh, or Linux or Windows uh, with the Windows subsystem for Linux installed. And so the way to get started is to uh, first build uh, a Qt from source. And the easiest way to get the sources is to download them using the Qt uh, maintenance tool or the online installer. So if you go into there, you can find the Qt version. You want the 5.12 and then uh, not the beta 2 anymore, but probably the RC. And then there's a checkbox for the sources uh, in there. And then uh, building on this from uh, source is typically done on the command line. So you, you run the configure script. Oops, let's see if you can select, uh, here you go. And you pass the X platform uh, with some M script and flag. Oh no. <laughs> and I need to scroll there. And then uh, we don't want to build all of the examples. So you pass no make examples as well. And then after configuring Qt, you can build uh, the Qt modules that you are uh, interested in using. So Qt Base has uh, widgets on the base of Qt, and then Qt Declarative has uh, Qt Quick and so on. And you can, for example, build Qt Quick controls too, as well, if you want those. Uh, this is going to be a static build of Qt. And what's also special is that they don't support uh, threads or multi-threading yet. So this, uh, so that the threading feature will be disabled uh, by default. We support a range of uh, Qt modules right now. Uh, so the ones I mentioned, and in, in addition, web sockets for networking, and we'll talk about networking later on. Uh, but some are missing, like Qt Multimedia and Qt Web Engine. So the, yeah, we can't compile Web Engine for the web target. That's not possible. Also, some fine print that uh, things that we are still working on and it's not supported. Um, there's no uh, clipboard support at this point, like for copy paste. But that. Uh, that's something that you want to uh, add later on. Uh, virtual keyboard support on mobile is missing. Uh, nested event loops are not supported. Uh, that's kind of a special. If you, it, that happens when you call exec on an event loop or, the, on, a, or on a dialogue. dialogue. Um, we can't access the system fonts, or Qt can't access the system fonts yet. So those have to be, for any fonts have to be embedded in the application. And finally, there's no accessibility or screen reader support at this point. Okay, so you build Qt and that's ready to go. And then you need to build the application. And this is similar to, to uh, what you would do for other platform targets. You run QMake, uh, 
uh, form your Qt build and then run make uh, to build your application. So QMake is a supported build system for now. And this will produce uh, several files uh, that you would then want to put on your web server to serve the application. So this is an overview of the files that you'll get. You'll get the, you can start at the bottom here. You get the, this is the main uh, file for the application which contains the application contact, the VASM file. Uh, and then MScript will add its uh, runtime, which uh, is implemented in JavaScript. And then Qt will add a loader file and an HTML file. So this is the, the HTML file is the file you open uh, to show the application. And depending on what you want to do, you might want to write your own HTML file, or you can use the default one that Qt provides. If you look at uh, binary sizes, which can be interesting, and I've, uh, I've measured that for a couple of applications. Uh, so depending on how much you use from Qt, your uh, binary size is going to increase, of course. And then there are also two options uh, when it comes to uh, uh, compressing the application. So we recommend uh, compressing the application uh, before showing it because the, the lesson files can be large when uh, they come straight from the compiler. Uh, but uh, compressing brings down the size uh, quite a bit. So gzip is kind of a good default format. It's supported by many web browsers. Uh, or many, many web servers on you. And a lot of them can compress on the fly or you can pre-compress uh, before it's a manual step. Uh, or you can use the Brotley compressor, which offers uh, an some better compression. Uh, and this is also, this compressor is also supported uh, by all web browsers that support uh, WebAssembly. Okay, so let, let, let's look at uh, how uh, the integration with the HTML, uh, what that looks like. Uh, so the application will be a canvas element, uh, which you can then place somewhere in uh, the HTML structure for the web page. So you can make the uh, canvas use the full browser viewport, or you can make it use a, a part of the browser viewport if you want to have kind of a mixed HTML and cute based uh, page. And on the cute size, uh, that canvas uh, is rep represented by a screen, a Q screen which then has the geometry that matches that of the canvas. And then the application can place uh, windows on that screen as usual. So you can have a kind of a, a full screen window which will use the entire canvas area or you can have uh, a uh, windowed window if, which will then get uh, window decorations. So let's look at a uh, demo. So we're going to look at uh, an application called Slate. Let's see, that is, yeah. So you can find that on GitHub. Uh, it's an image editor and it made with uh, Qt uh, Quick Controls 2. And it's authored by a colleague of mine, uh, Mitch. So let's see, how it is uh, running in the browser. So I can, uh, let's see, I can attempt uh, a painting here, like so.
So it is uh, quite responsive and it works uh, like you would expect it to work. Uh, so this is the, this shows the, the application embedded in this presentation uh, web page. It uses a sub uh, section of the entire window. Uh, we can also make it use the entire viewport. Let's see, I'm going to open it again. And here it is using the entire, the entire tab, you can say. Um, and if I, and if I resize, then it will track that window size, of course. And I can also, uh, let's see, bring it out to another window and I can do things like uh, changing the browser zoom so the application UI is scalable in that way. We can uh, try it out in some other browsers, like uh, Safari. So it's loading. And I also have Chrome here. That's on. So, yeah. So loading time varies between the browsers. Uh, Firefox also is fast. Uh, Chrome is okay. Safari is still loading here. Uh, so the actual runtime performance is uh, good in all of them, at least uh, on my system. So there is, I'm not really able to see a difference between the browsers after startup, after the application has started. Yeah, so let's get back uh, back to the presentation. Um, next slide. Yes, so we're going to look at uh, local file access. So as you know, on the web page, uh, all content is uh, sandboxed. Uh, so that means you can't just open any any file on the on the host or on the on the user's uh, system. And that's a good thing because otherwise uh, any web page could open any file and you don't want that. Uh, Queue file still works, but it targets um, by default an in-memory file system. So uh, that's an API that or that's implemented by Antwritten. So that means that you can use it to kind of save uh, temporary files but they uh, are uh, not persisted, so they will uh, disappear once the user navigates away from the page. Um, what we can do is use some of the uh, HTML API available. So it has API for opening a file dialog and then also triggering a file download. So what we have done is that we have created some uh, new Qt uh, API for that. And so the API looks something like this. It's not finalized yet, but it is. Uh, there you have a, uh, a load file function where you specify which files, which file types you are interested in. And you then provide a callback, which will give you the file content and the file name. So you don't get to access the file yourself. Uh, instead, the browser will show the open file dialog and then uh, give you the, the file content when it's ready. Saving files uh, has a similar API, save file, where you uh, provide the content that you, that you want to save and also a uh, file alignment. And this will uh, trigger a download dialog on the browser. And there's, there's no way of knowing here if that uh, save uh, was successful or not. Uh, but that's kind of a limitation of the current browser API. So you can try it. Uh, let me quickly create uh, a drawing here. Let's see, yes, more squares. Then I save. Okay, and this, this is a native dialogue or the browser-provided native dialogue. Uh, 
asks me, do you want to save the file? And I say, yes. Yeah. And then I can open. And yes. Well, I can open a different one. Let's see. I'll previous test this one. And this is also a native dialog, which is shown by the browser. And there it is. So it's it's possible to create a workflow using this. It's not, it's not going to be exactly the same as uh, the native one, and you might want to change the application UI a bit, for example. I have save as, or there, there's no kind of distinction between save and save as, so this can be kind of combined into one uh, when running on the web. Okay. Go to the next slide. Yes. So networking. Uh, this is also affected by the by the sandbox. So uh, if you try to open a socket to any host, then that's a TCP socket, for example, then that's not going to work. But there are some options. Um, you can use Q Network Access Manager and make uh, HTTP uh, requests, and then either back to the same origin or the same host as the files, as the apl application uh, was served from. Or you can use something called uh, CORS, which uh, stands for Cross Origin uh, Resource Sharing. So some servers will allow. Uh, Kind of any client to access uh, resources using HTTP, and it does so by ses by setting uh, special headers. So those are the options there. Uh, web sockets uh, work uh, well on the web, also Q web socket. So you can make uh, a web socket connection to any host. Uh, then there's a final option uh, for if you really want to use TCP sockets, then there is something called uh, WebSockify, and this is a third party component uh, that can be used to tunnel uh, that connection over WebSockets. So this is something uh, that uh, Mscritten supports, and you can then run kind of a custom uh, WebSockify for the forwarding server on a host, which can then uh, kind of pipe that TCP connection through to the, uh, to the destination. Uh, this is, isn't something I've tested myself, uh, but I just wanted to kind of uh, put it up here as an option. So let's have a look at the example again. Uh, this is the, our uh, MQTT uh, example using the Qt MQTT module and QWebSockets. And MQTT, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is kind of a uh, publish, uh, subscribe messaging service. So you will have uh, a broker that is running the service and you can connect to it and it has topics that you can uh, subscribe to topics and then uh, kind of uh, publish and get messages. So let's see. And uh, this is actually a good opportunity to uh, look at uh, how we can do debugging because this doesn't always connect. Uh, we'll see if it does. So I can go in and open the debugging, uh, the browser debugging networking tab here. Let's see, can I put it on the side somehow? I've forgotten. Well, that's okay. So we are now in the networking. And then when I click Connect, you should see that uh, a, a browser, that a network connection is made. So let's see. Yeah, there it is. So we can then inspect the headers. So we made an HTTP GET. Uh, to this uh, high MQ broker. And the type should be, uh, yes, it's a WebSocket upgrade. 
So this is now, this is kind of the initial setup of the WebSocket connection. Uh, I can unsubscribe the topic and then publish a test, test message and we see, yeah, we get the echo here. Uh, so this doesn't show up in the debug, uh, in the debug, uh, in the debug panel here. Okay. Ah, I'm taking response. So yeah, what happens if you quit a cute application that is running in a web browser? You get this. The play solo screen with an application exit. So that this was a clean exit. So, so quit buttons uh, again. This is again a UI thing. Quit buttons may not make make sense when targeting the web. So you might want to kind of disable those from the web build. Okay, let's see if I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So finally, we're going to look at. Uh, use cases where you kind of are making a mixed uh, web page, a mixed application where some with some uh, HTML content uh, or JavaScript code, and then some C++ or uh, or Qt content. So it's possible to call uh, the DOM API from C++. What we are using internally in Qt now uh, is uh, an API uh, that is provided by mscripten called mscripten val. So this allows us to, uh, for example, access uh, the document. This is kind of a global, the main, uh, the main DOM object uh, on the page. And we can then uh, create new elements on it, for example, or call functions. So this is what you are doing for the, the file, uh, the file open and file uh, save, uh, save case. Uh, so we are using this in Qt, and you can use it from your applications as well, if, if you want to. You can also export API from uh, from C++ to uh, and call that from the JavaScript. Um, so in this case, I have a simple kind of a set color function, and this is a part of an example that I'll, sh I'll show later on. A set color function uh, which takes uh, four ints, and I, and I I can then use the mscript bindings. Uh, Variable or no, we don't have variable. The script bindings uh, mac macro uh, to export it, and then from the JavaScript side, I will find it again on the global module object. I can call it by the same name, and then uh, the arguments will be forwarded. And so here's an example using that. Uh, these images here are uh, standard uh, images uh, rendered by the web browser. And then this chart uh, thing down here is a cute based component. So the JavaScript on the page will then, uh, as a kind of a mouse uh, over uh, event handler, it will uh, read the pixel value from uh, the image and then call into the Qt based module to update the chart. Yeah, so this was one example of how you could kind of create a mixed HTML and Qt based uh, uh, web page. Let's see, and this one sticks my forward button, so I need to click there. Yeah, that was uh, all for me. Thank you. 
And then I guess we'll take uh, questions now. So let's see in the... Yes, I think there's a few questions in the Q&A. Yeah. <clears throat> so I should just read them, I guess. Uh, yes, please, yeah. Yeah. So first question for Frederick. I've noticed that uh, Chrome 70 have been released with beta support for WebAssembly threads. Is this possible to utilize uh, from Qt? Uh, and the answer is uh, not yet. This is something they're working on. Uh, so I think uh, the next uh, re release 5.13 is uh, where you might be able to, uh, we might release this uh, first. So uh, wait for 5.13 or perhaps pay attention to the dev branch of Qt where support will land at uh, some point. Yeah. Like so. And then a question from David here. Uh, does Q settings work with WebAssembly now? The last time I tried, it did not really store it. Yes, I know there is some, uh, we have some uh, support for settings, but I don't know uh, what the status of that is. So that's something I have to kind of follow up on, I think. And then a question from uh, Fernando. Uh, what about the pending improve in exec loop handling for WebAssembly? Uh, and we are kind of limited there for technical reasons. Uh, and the technical reason is that we have to on the main thread return control uh, to the browser uh, when we are done processing uh, Qt events. Um, so right now, there's not much uh, we can do. Uh, perhaps when we have thread support, that we can do something like running uh, Qt on a secondary thread, which we can then block uh, while uh, the executor is running. Uh, but that's kind of a research uh, topic there. And then there was another question from uh, Frederick. Yeah. Are there any plans for providing pre-compiled Qt lesson binaries through the maintenance tool? And the answer is uh, yes. Uh, that's also uh, that's also pl planned for Qt 5.13. Uh, then I think we have a question at the end. Yeah, yes, from Alessandro. Yeah. Um, uh, what kind of applications do you think would benefit most from this kind of Qt HTML integration? Um, yes, I don't, uh, for my part, what I want to do is kind of, I want to, uh, when I'm working on a Qt component, then I want to have a way to kind of demo it uh, on the web quickly. So, so that's kind of my use case. But uh, other than that, I'm hoping that, that you can kind of come up with new use cases. And, uh, and yes, please, please, please feel free to tell us and uh, post feedback on the blogs, uh, also when something is working. So that's uh, that's very useful to us to see what this uh, can be used for. And then was there one, another question? Let's see. Yes, there's quite a few. There's one around uh, from David. Do you plan on su support? Uh, do you plan support for WebAssembly with dynamic linking? Yes, this is also. Uh, a research topic for the next version uh, for 5.13. So I think we will be able to get uh, something going there. Uh, perhaps static linking will be the main way uh, to uh, to deploy applications also for 5.13. But uh, we can at least kind of enable 
the shear or the dynamic uh, a build that uses uh, dynamic linking. And then somebody is asking for the GitHub link. Yes, I. Uh, I can paste it, uh, let's see, in the, in the chat, chat, I guess. Yeah, if you put it in the chat then everyone yeah. can see it. Right, and that was for the, that's a second link here that you can take you directly to the presentation. Yeah. And then uh, Ralph has a question about uh, let me chirp plus is, if that's going to be supported as an alternative to M script. Uh, and I've only barely heard of it, so I guess the answer is no, not right now. But uh, so I guess this is an alternative SDK. Uh, I think Mfritten is, is going to be the SDK we are using for now, but we will uh, keep an eye open for for other alternatives. Yeah. The question from Tim about uh, licensing. How does this work? So the licensing is uh, GPL. Uh, and commercial. Um, so the platform integration itself is TPL licensed. That means that when you are building uh, an application uh, for WebAssembly or using Q4 WebAssembly, then the entire thing becomes TPL uh, licensed. Um, if you want to use a commercial license, you should get in touch uh, with uh, sales at this point, basically. Okay, we'll give um, give everyone a few more seconds to see if there's any more questions. Yeah. I think that might be it for today. Okay. Great. Um, thank you so much um, for your great presentation. Uh, I think. Yep, I think that's it for the day. Um, if you do have any many more questions we didn't go through, please send us an email uh, on info at qd.io. Q we'll answer them for you. But um, until then, um, I wish you a great day and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.